Today I would like to share a subject, a topic that I think affected me big time once I received or understood this revelation. And I really hope that it could be a big blessing to you as well. Uh, if you don't mind, let's say a short prayer. But I want this prayer to be very personal, very, very personal. Holy Spirit, we ask you, speak to our hearts right now. Holy Spirit, I ask you to speak to me personally through this word of God in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we ask you to grab our full attention in Jesus' name. We expect your word to impact us deeply, and we thank you. Amen. Before I uh, tell you the topic of my message, I would like to show you these three letters that I believe will help you to memorize the uh, topic of my sermon today, MMM. And uh, I would like to ask you guys to try to figure out what it means. Each letter has a meaning. And if you can, please try to have an explanation for every single letter. If you uh, lived in the former Soviet Union, some of you were born there, we used to see this huge advertisement all over the country. And uh, it was um, sort of like a stock market. It had to do with voucher investments. But what I have in mind, um, and I hope it will help you to remember this topic better, MMM stands for Motive Moves Mountains. I think that, yes, next slide. Uh, I think that uh, when you hear from someone a deal that is too good to be true, when you, when you see a person who is like, he's so kind, he's so generous, he's like so like, uh, it seems like, it's, there is something, you know, behind his actions and words. He's like, well, it's too good to be true. You, in your mind, what you have is you're wondering what is his motive? Why is he doing this? Why is he uh, so kind? And I believe, guys, that once you find out the motive of the person, it changes everything. I believe that truly in our lives, motive moves mountains motive can change so much i know that from the new testament we we see that jesus christ he rebuked people when they were fake when they were when they lived a double life uh, jesus he mentioned that sometimes you can worship me with your lips but your heart is far from me so god he cares about your heart but it's impossible to divide heart and motive you can do good things with your hands, you can walk in the right direction with your legs, but if your motive, if your heart is, it's not pure, God, He pays attention to our motive. I believe, this is a statement that I believe it can be a big revelation to many of you, that motive regulates your priorities in life. And second statement, motive regulates your emotions and your mood. Think about it for a second. Motive regulates your mood. Motive affects your attitude. And motive affects your priorities. Let's read together from Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and is a discerning of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the Word of God, it's not only about Bible stories. The Word of God, it's not just information. The book, the Bible, it's not only just a bunch of rules. One of the missions of the Word of God is to discern or judge our motives. If you pay attention to this verse, realize 
that the goal of the word of God, one of the main goals is to judge our motives. And God, he is behind his word. If you decided to, I believe that uh, some areas in our lives, people cannot see, people cannot penetrate, uh, heart, soul, brain, uh, medicine cannot sometimes understand everything. But the word of God has the potential, has the, this capability to go so deep that it, the Holy Spirit can convict us and reveal to us what is the true motive, why we do what we do. If you decided to follow Jesus, your motive will determine how far you will, you are willing to go to obey him. For example, if you decided to follow Jesus because your mom pressured you, because your wife pressured you, because you, you have fear, you, don't just, you, just, you just don't want to go to hell, because you, have, uh, you, are, in prob you are in deep problems, because of that, if this is your true motive, you will not go far. You will not go to the end of the earth to obey. You will not go far to obey our Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe, if you follow Jesus, if you claim that you are a believer only because based on what you can get from God, as soon as you don't get something, as soon as your prayer is not answered, it will be a huge stumbling block for you and you will not continue to follow Jesus because it's all about motive why do you serve Jesus why do you follow him why do you claim that you are a believer let's say you got married your motive will determine your relationship with your spouse because many years ago you told your if you are married your wife or your husband that you I love you but what you meant is actually I love the fact that you will make me happy. And because your motive was wrong since the beginning, because your expectations were wrong, because you meant that she must or she will make me happy, that was your selfish motive. That's why you are not happy today. Because he didn't satisfy your dreams, because she didn't satisfy all your desires, and now you're unhappy. But the motive was selfish. The motive was not, I will serve you no matter what. I will serve you and love you no matter how you treat me. I will love you no matter how you love me back. You see, the motive explains many things that we are dealing with, that we are dealing with today. If you're not disappointed with people, in people yet i'm sorry to share this bad sad news that eventually you will be disappointed in people why let me give you a few more examples or warnings let's say you're in ministry it's a good thing to do god he supports he expects from every believer to be involved in ministry and to serve people but motive will determine how long you will last if you serve people if that's your good intention but that same people that you serve they will criticize you they will abuse you they will not appreciate you sometimes they will mock you judge you or slander about you your motive to serve people sometimes can kill you why because our true motive should be I first of all I serve my Lord I serve my God and the fact that I'm serving people, it's just uh, the result, the way I, uh, the way I uh, express myself towards God is by serving people. It changes completely everything. Your, whole, your attitude, your relationship with people will change completely if you have the right motive. Let me read you this main uh, Bible passage. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 through 24 everything is based on this Bible verse Colossians 3 23 and whatever you do other translation says all everything that you do what does it mean everything everything means everything nothing has there's no exception to everything whatever you do do it heartily other translation says, do it, from the, uh, do it with, uh, with diligence, with the excellence, from the bottom of your heart. As to the Lord, not to man, 
knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward for you serve the Lord Christ so once again let's pay closer attention to this biblical passage I believe it it's addressing believers those who already know Jesus because those who don't know Jesus they will they don't care about the Lord they will never do anything in the name of the Lord or for the Lord but those who claim or believe that we are believers or Christians the Bible is very clear whatever you do everything you do anything you do now stop for a second and try to remember how much we do daily how much we do weekly how many plans we have sometimes a year ahead now out of these plans or actions that we do how many of them do we truly do as for the Lord how many don't you agree that if you're honest with yourself half of them or probably majority of them we don't do it as for the Lord I do it for my wife my boss my teacher my neighbor I do it for myself I do whatever I do whatever but I do most of the time not as for the Lord I just do it then it says that we are to do it heartily from the bottom of our hearts so God he expects quality work from all of us it doesn't matter what you do what's your job where you work who you're doing it for if your motive is right you will do it as for the Lord and the quality of your work will always be good excellence it's a quality of believers because we follow this passage then it says do it as for the Lord and then to dub, to make sure just in case to double check there is it says not as for men for the Lord that means not for your boss not for your pastor not even for your spouse as for the Lord and then it says at the end that you will receive the reward from the Lord you will receive the reward from the Lord I believe that every Christian must always ask whatever we do what is my motive why am I doing this if you want to get married why if your motive is wrong you will be hurt and you will hurt you will be hurt and you will hurt others because your motive is wrong your motive is selfish you expect to receive if you want to serve if you want to be in ministry why is it because you like attention is it because you like fame is it because you like to rule okay I want to make money what is your motive well I need to uh, support my family yes that's okay is this is this the only motive yes I understand it's necessary we 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 should do we should make money to support our families but what if your motive is higher what if your motive is deeper you want to you want to make money not only to pay for your bills but also to raise or give glory to the kingdom of God also to invest in the kingdom of God maybe support and help needy poor people or invest in missions that's also a good cause a different motive a different level why I'm doing why am I working why am I making money or you want to serve people remember that people will hurt you okay I'm not gonna deal with people I will serve Jesus remember Jesus was serving and he got hurt and he got killed why did he go till the end why why he wasn't stopped why he didn't stop because how people treated him back because his motive was my father's will that motive was that motive makes me unshakable if whatever I do I do it as for the Lord I do it and I seek his will in my life then whatever people act react say or treat you you will not be shaken if your motive is right if your motive is wrong you will always feel unappreciated let me repeat if your motive is wrong if you whatever you do you don't do it as for the Lord you will always feel unappreciated among people always if you do it as for the Lord you don't you don't need to be appreciated even though we we all like it I'm not saying that I don't like it but if you have a wrong motive 
it will beat you, it will stop you, it will cause you to lose joy. If you have a wrong motive, you will always live with a victim mentality. I'm so, I'm so miserable, I'm so tired, I'm so this, I, I'm, 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 uh, you will always have, if you have a wrong motive, you will always have a reason to accuse. If you have a wrong motive, you will always have a reason to complain. Just analyze all these facts. Every time you complain, if it's a wrong motive, you have many reasons. If the motive is right, whatever I do, I do it as for the Lord, not for him, not for her. I do it as for my Lord, my God, I do it for him. It doesn't matter how people treat me, it's my motive. Totally different, different approach, different attitude, different... Uh, you look, from, you look at life from totally different perspective. So the, the question is, the question remains, do I feel like I'm a victim? Do I deal with self-pity? Or do I remind, remind myself, Lord, whatever I do, I do it as for the Lord. Can you imagine how much I think our attitude would change, our reaction, our emotions, our mood would change if we would put that Bible verse on the fridge, in your car, and every time you have a reaction, you just read it again and again. Lord, why am I having this bad reaction? Because of people, obviously. But why am I driven by people? Am I driven because of, yes, often we are. But that's why we need to read this again and again. And we need to get back on track. Lord, no, 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 they're not going to affect. I, I don't want to be affected by this. No, no, I want to be motivated by a different motive. I am a different... I have a different nature. I have a different, different DNA. I am driven by this motive. That's why I keep going. Good, right motive, pure motive will always help you to keep moving forward. Wrong motive. Always you will accuse. You will always be sad, depressed, negative because of the wrong motive. You know, what helped me in life when I fell down is... Discover this truth, the motive. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9, it says, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. New King James translation says, let, let us not grow weary while doing good. Let us not give up when we do good. I never understood this Bible verse. Why do we get sad, disappointed, uh, burdened when we do good? I thought we get only weary when we, are, when, we, when we have problems, when we deal with problems. Then we get disappointed and burdened. But here the Bible verse says, hello, be careful. Even when you do good, you can get discouraged or disappointed. Why? Because of your motive. Because you were doing good to some people. They didn't pay you back with good. They didn't even appreciate your good. They even hurt you for your good. And that's why you're discouraged. That's why you feel weary. That's why you're burdened. Because of your wrong motive since the beginning. But if you do that same thing from the perspective, whatever I do, anything, everything I do, I do it as for the Lord my Lord, my God, yes, you have a choice to do it for yourself. You have a choice to do it for them, for your boss, for your spouse, for your pastor. But you will always be, most likely, always be disappointed. Always will be, you will be dealing with bitterness, offense. You'll be dealing with uh, unappreciate, unappreciated, unimportant, hurt, victim mentality, self-pity, wrong motive destroys you, kills you. But when you have the right motive, you will be unshakable. You will keep moving forward. You know why our fathers or grandfathers, they were put in prison in the former Soviet Union because of their faith. How did they, uh, they felt betrayed even by their own brothers. I don't know if you heard these stories, even by people who were called themselves Christians, they went to church and then they were betrayed by these people. They were treated very harshly in prison. And why, why did they, why did, why were, why, how come they stayed faithful and loyal to the Lord till the end? Because of their motive. 
they were ready to live and they were ready to die for, our, for their God, my Lord. What do you think if today persecution would come to United States? How many people would keep moving forward as believers and Christians if Christians would be thrown into prison, jail, would be persecuted? What if it happens tomorrow? No, let's give us a week notice, okay? What if it happens, persecution happens in one week from today? How many believers do you think or Christians will stop coming to church, will stop calling themselves believers or Christians? My personal opinion, I think that many will fall away. Not because I want this, but because sometimes of the motive. If your motive is pure, deep and honest, yes, you will go till the end. Let me give you another illustration. I believe it's very practical that shows and expose, exposes our motive. Our reaction is connected to our motive. Our attitude has to do with our motive. Let me read you very, um, I believe it's practical. First Peter chapter 4, verse 9 through 10. It says, be hospitable to one another without grumbling. And serve one another with the minister to one another as good stewards of our Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever asked, have you ever thought why hospitality has to do with complaining. In the same Bible verse, hospitality and complaining is connected. Serving people, in other words, and complaining, and there is a warning. When you think about it, often because it exposes hidden areas of our inner personality. Yes, I will explain myself. Often when we host people, when we, we say we serve people, we perform to the max. We uh, show our best. The house is spotless clean. Everything looks amazing. Food tastes good. Seems like Everything looks beautiful. It seems like it's okay. It's normal. For guests, it's normal. But often, the motive behind this is pride. Show off. Selfishness. You might disagree. I will explain. Just give me a couple more minutes. You might say, well, it's normal. We, uh, that's how we show hospitality. And I do the same. I agree with you. When we host guests at our house, we try to do the best. Clean house, good food. Uh, you know, my wife, she does shopping, she cleans, she cooks, she serves, and I do the rest. Yeah. So when we, sometimes when we host people, uh, it seems like, you know, you come and you enter into the atmosphere where it smells perfection. You know, like it's, everything's perfect. And I think that often, because of our wrong motive, we get discouraged, disappointed, we get emotional because of the wrong motive. Let me explain myself. You might say, well, you know, when you do, uh, I don't know, events in church, for example, conferences, you also, uh, we can say, you're so organized, uh, it's a show off. Right? We can also say that. So, when... So what is, what is uh, let me tell this, excellence, it's not a sin. To do everything good, it's okay. It's, good. It's, 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 it's very good. Excellence is not a sin. But what can become a sin if your motive is wrong, if something did not go according to your plan, you will lose peace. You will lose joy. You will start screaming and yelling. You will become very negative. All people around you will feel the vibe. It's all about me. Even though we say we serve people, we kind of, you know, do it for people. But when the motive is wrong, 
it will kill you, destroy you, and people will be destroyed, those who are around you. But if something did not go according to your plan, either, it, either it's, it's either cleaning your house, cooking, or performing on, on stage, or uh, putting up an event, a concert, a conference together, if it didn't go according to your plan, if your motive is, I do my best, and I let Jesus Christ do the rest, you will be unshakable because you do it for him, not for them. You do it for him, not because of you. It's not about you, it's not your selfish motive. Sometimes we claim, we say, we're simple people. We're simple people, you know? Let me show up in your house without a warning. You will start shaking. That's how simple you are. <laughs> yeah, so simple. But when you're simple and when it's not about you, when you, you have a pure motive, yeah, I want to serve people, I want to do my best. If I can, I will do the best. But I will always give room to God to do the rest. And when the motive is not selfish, then your reaction, your attitude and your mood will be way, way, way on a different level. Whatever I do, I do it as for the Lord. As for the Lord, not to impress people. I want to bless, not to impress. Then you see how practical it gets. That's why motive can move mountains. That's why motive affects your attitude. Motive affects your reaction. Your motive, we can only say with words, yeah, we serve people, we do it for people. Listen to this, whatever you do, if you do it for your boss, for your uh, wife, for your husband, for your pastor, you will always be disappointed. Hmm? You know this feeling, right? You have been dealing with this feeling for many, many years. But if you change your motive, whatever I do, I do it as for the Lord, not for men, for the Lord. Everything changes. You know, instead of stress, relaxation comes. That's why motive, I believe, is important. Motive sometimes regulates our expectations from people. Often unfulfilled expectations bring disappointment because we have expectations. Our actions and words depends on how people treat us. I love you because I love you because you love me. I'm nice to you because you're nice to me. I care for you because you care for me. Is it a biblical model? Or is it our own selfish rule, explanation, motive. We are called to love people. We are called to serve and often it's not, a, or it's not based on your terms. Sometimes we respond to the need and it's timing is very, very not good. But we are called to love people. The Bible says, Luke 6 27 love your enemies stop right there enemies those people who don't just like you they hate you with passion love your enemies then it says do good to those who hate you it's not that they didn't put a like on your post they hate you bless those who curse you and pray for those who hurt you do you see the motive is way, way, way so deep, so deep. Why am I doing this? Why am I praying for him, for this guy who hurt me? How often do we practice this? Pray for those who hurt you. I'm sure you're dealing with hurt every week almost. Pray for those who hurt you because you are driven by a different motive. That's why. You have a diff different DNA. I am a believer. I am his representative. That's why my motive is very, very different. So often, you know, when you even going through a hard, tough relationship and you, you feel like screaming, like, I'm done with this. I don't want to deal with them, him, her. What if you just ask, Lord, what do you want me to do? And if you receive a yes in your spirit, and if you change your motive, why you will keep doing and covering with love, even though he or she doesn't deserve it, it will give you strength to keep 
moving forward. Motive. Not because his actions or her attitude changed, your motive. Let me give you uh, another practical example from my childhood. Uh, my grandfather, my father's father, he was a beekeeper. And I remember I was maybe 10 years old uh, and uh, he took me with him uh, in the forest, many open fields around us. We would sleep in the tents. You know, it would be like amazing time. No iPads, no iPhones, you know, like just, uh, you just run around. What do you do next day? You just run around. What do you do next day? The schedule doesn't change. You just enjoy. <laughs> uh, and uh, I remember my grandfather, he had uh, these beehives. So he was making honey from scratch. And uh, he would told me, he told me, he warned me, you know what? Do not stick anything into this <laughs> beehive. Do not irritate the bees. Do not do, do not touch. Got it? Got it. <laughs> you know how you receive the information and 10, 12, 15 years old, you know. If they told you don't do it, you will go and do it. And so that's what I did, you know. I got the stick, little stick, and I went right inside and I found this bee and I, you know, poked her right into her eye. <laughs> and then, guess what happens next? I remember myself running over the speed limit. <laughs> Running, running, not driving, running over the speed limit. And I don't know how many of them, I know a lot of them. They were chasing me, I couldn't run fast enough. They were biting me, the whole head, swollen, bitten all over my face. I remember this story and I remember that I changed my... <laughs> my my view my perspective on bees and i respect beekeepers by the way i still love honey but i don't want to do i don't want anything to do with bees and then i came back to my grandfather yeah i didn't have to explain myself you know everything was all over my face you know so he told me what's up yes i said yeah he said yeah i told you yeah and then i asked him you know uh tell me this have you ever got bitten by a bee? And he said, yes. And I said, what do you mean, yes? And he said, yeah, many times. And I said, and so, and yeah, I have been doing this for 20 plus years. And I was like, whoa, I only tried it once and I'm done. And I think forever. And you are doing this for 20 plus years. Why? And he gave me a lesson. His behavior, his actions, they don't depend on how bees treat him because of his motive. Because his motive is pure and right, he is not dependable. He doesn't care how bees bite, hurt him. He will still continue to do his job. So every time you deal with hurt, with people, evil for good, always remember this image, me running away, beehives, and we depend how people treat us. That's why we're broken, crashed, depressed, negative, sad, self-pity, victim mentality because I'm not driven by the motive that is so clearly written to us whatever you do do it as for the Lord otherwise you will always be running away from people always and you will have to deal with another B family that will also treat you the way you did not expect first Corinthians chapter 4 verse 5 it says therefore judge nothing before the appointed time wait until the Lord comes he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of your heart anytime you see someone 
and you don't approve their actions or their words, the Bible warns us, please don't judge them harshly. Please don't put them down because you don't know their motive. And trust me, me, God, I am, this is my personal business. Yes, I will make sure to discern the motive of their heart. I will, me, myself, God is saying, I will expose the motive of their heart. Like I said, God, he is about, he's after your heart. It's not only what you're doing with your hands. You can do the right thing with your hands. You can do the right thing with your legs. But if your heart does not match your hands, that's what God is talking about. Your motive, motive, it will be exposed. So try to remember when was the last time you were criticizing or judging someone within the last week or last month and now try to imagine that what if he was doing it from the bottom of his heart what if his motive was pure what if he just made a mistake what if he's not what if it was not his intention if you for a second will get a chance to see his true motive your attitude will change because it's all about motive motive of his or your heart Often when we complain or get mad or angry, it's because we forget why we're doing it. For who are we doing this? God doesn't always need your strength or talents because he can use even your weaknesses. All God is waiting is just be available and have pure motive. Do your best and let God do the rest. He will use your weaknesses. As soon as, as long as you have pure motives. Why motive is so important to God? Because it exposes our relationship with God. Matthew 22, 37, it says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart. It's impossible to do the, to love God with all your heart if you have a wrong motive. You must love God with all your soul. Once again, we're dealing with your inner personality, something that is hidden from our eyes, but God, He discerns those motives when, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. Why motive is connected to your relationship with God? Because you cannot love God if you have a wrong motive. You cannot have devotions. You cannot have quality time with God if your motive is not deep or pure. If your motive is, well, I'm a Christian because, you know, like, why not? I'm a Christian because, you know, what if God can help me when I'm, uh, when I can't solve the problem? But if you do it out of love, it changes everything. Why do you get up in the morning? Why do you go to sleep late? Why do you spend time with Him when no one sees? Because of your motive. You know, here, when we pray, when we worship, why do you do the same? Because, you know, like, because of them, because of the whole congregation, you know, like, why not? You know, why should I be rebellious? You know, well, since I'm here, I will do it. But it, it doesn't mean that your motive in worshiping, serving, praying, and spending time with God is really true. Because when you're home alone, you don't do it. You don't have enough motivation. Why? You don't have enough motivation to spend time with the Lord. Why? Why you don't have enough motivation to either get up early or uh, stay late and to spend time with Him? Because motivation is wrong. Because your motivation is maybe, well, I have to because out of guilt, because like, you know, like, you know, like the preacher told me we have to. What if your motive is pure out of love? Lord, I'm doing this for you. I live for you, I serve for you, I will die for you because, because of you I am unshakable. I don't want to be dependable on how people treat me. I want to be driven, driven by higher, deeper motives. Lord, please teach me. Holy Spirit, please expose me at least. I want to see me, myself, how I live. You know, when you love your kids, when you invest in your kids, for those who have kids, often, sometimes kids, they hurt us. Sometimes they don't obey their parents all the time. What do parents do? In most 
in most cases, parents, they still continue to love. In most cases, parents still continue to cover and to pay um, with good instead of evil for evil. Why is that? Because they're driven by a deeper, higher motive. They don't, they, they, they don't, they're not driven by how kids treat them. Often we are driven by this motive. We have sort of a good intention. But as soon as people don't treat us right, we're crushed. Crushed. Depressed. Why? Motive was wrong. But if your motive is, Lord, please help me to remember this verse. Whatever I do, yes, whatever I do, I have so much to do. I have so much planned. Lord, please remind me whatever I do. Help me to do it as for the Lord. As for the Lord. My God. My Lord. Everything must bring glory to God. That's why the Bible says whatever, everything you do. First Peter 2.12, it says... When they speak against you as evildoers, they may, they may hurt you, but by your good works, which they observe, it will glorify God. It will bring glory to God. If you pay attention to the context, these people, they treat you badly. They hurt you. They talk bad about you. If your motive is right, you will continue to do good. If your motive is wrong, you will stop serving them. You will stop. You will stop paying good for good. But here, specifically it says, they hurt you. But you keep doing good because you're driven by a different motive. And that will bring glory to God. That's how you bring light. That's how you become salt. Because you're driven by a different motive. Yes, I believe that in everything, in everything, we can bring glory and we should bring glory to God. If we have the right motive. Even shopping with the right motive can bring glory to God. You might say, well, how? When I'm shopping for clothes, why, how does it glorify God? Because when you shop and when you buy clothes and you have the right motive, you keep that in mind that I will represent him whatever I will wear I will represent him not just me do you see how it affects your fashion if your motive is I will represent him even shopping is affected by your motive another example vacation you might say well it's not spiritual <laughs> what do you how can you preach about it in church Yes, if your motive is pure, even vacation, even when you get rest, even when you go to the gym, if you do it for Him, you know what will be going through your mind? Yes, I am getting rest. I am going on vacation because with the intention, I will serve Him better. I will be more effective. I will have more strength. Not only I will get rest for my body, but I will perform better for my Lord as well. I will serve him better because I will feel rested. If you go to the gym, it's not spiritual at all, but your motive even affects this physical exercise. If your motive is like, I just want to show off, I just want to look better, I just want to attract uh, attention to myself, it's, it's also a motive. What if your motive becomes a little bit different, a little bit higher? I want to feel healthier because I will serve Him better. Whatever you do, yes, even your vacation, even your going to the gym, even shopping, even cleaning, you know, you will sing a song. It doesn't matter if you have a musical degree, you will still sing a song. When you're cleaning, when you're working hard, when your boss is not nice to you, you will sing a song, either a very negative song or you will sing a song, Lord, you know, I dream about better job. Lord, please send me a better job. 
but as long as am I'm here till the rest till the last day at this job I will do my best I will be your representative and I will do it as for the Lord whoa your song will change it doesn't mean that your boss will change but your song your attitude will change only because of your motive whatever I do I will do it as for the Lord very practical things I, I named you a few of how your attitude your lifestyle changes how everything is affected by your motive you know why motive moves mountains because when you are full of offense bitterness hurt it's a huge mountain you cannot move it by yourself but when you have a pure right motive no i will stand up i will get up and i will move forward why because i'm doing this as for the lord the mountain will be moved by your right motive pure motive different motive different level of motivation you know when joseph he was in jail genesis 39 2 it says but the lord was with joseph and showed him mercy think about this example wow so he's in prison food is nasty living conditions are mm, three and a half star in egypt no ac no tv uh how they treat you back in the days you realize right so how come this guy was so motivated to work for this nice boss <laughs> work what was he driven by what was his motivation whatever i do i do it as for the lord even in prison even starving even when i'm hurt i will do it as for the lord many guys were in that same cell in that same prison with joseph many of them but all of them had different motivation and different attitude and different reaction because of their motive and then it's interesting that it says God was with him hmm, God where were you when I got into prison why didn't you save me it's a different sermon but God was with him in trouble no bitterness no offense even though it was so unfair unjust he had to deal with slander fake accusations my life is ruined Lord you know I don't understand it it's kind of painful but whatever I do I will do it as for the Lord Lord I know you are on the throne I know you are alive you are still in control I don't like it it's painful it hurts Lord I will not take this victim mentality I will keep moving forward whatever I do whatever I say I will do it as for the Lord not as for people last passage is Galatians chapter 1 verse 10 I'm not trying to win the approval of people but of God if pleasing people were my goal I would not be Christ's servant serving and pleasing people and serving and pleasing God both have some sort of motivation but it's very different level of motivation if you're pleasing and serving people this motive sometimes can bite and kill you but working and serving God your Lord you will become unshakable not because people changed but because your motive changed it will help you in life to keep moving forward you know what when people do wrong in God's eyes what justifies them what makes them right yes repentance yes faith 
Yes, the blood of Jesus Christ. And there's one more thing. It's called motive. Even when you fall, even you, when you're weak, even when you make mistakes, as long as your motive is pure, trust me, God sees that. You're struggling, but your motive is pure. That's what makes the difference. It's not what you do with hands, your motive, the motive of your heart. Before our prayer, I would like you to ask this question. Ask yourself, what do you do in life as for the Lord? Let me repeat the question. Tell, be honest with yourself. What do you do in life, your life, as for the Lord? Let's stand, please.